All right, guys um, and gals. Uh, this week, uh, this month, we have Charles Delfs, who's going to speak to us here momentarily. Charles started off as an electrical engineer. I guess he's still considered an electrical engineer, but uh, he did some work with hardware, uh, radio frequency stuff early on, and then uh, found that he liked software better. So he got into software and, uh, and then uh, found FileMaker. And so he's been a FileMaker developer for quite a while, worked for several companies, um, all around Canada and even a stint in, in the UK, uh, evidently, and um, uh, a variety of different companies doing development work. And so he currently has his own company. Well, I mean, he's he's got several companies. How many companies do you have now? You've got the, he's got a, a, a health and fitness club. He's got a, um, that's why he looks so young. Um, and he's got uh, the Char Delphs Engineering, and he's got the um, uh, fmbetterforms.com. Uh, you're, you're muted. So anyways, <laughs> okay. So for about 30 years, he's been doing all kinds of stuff, high tech, software, hardware. And, um, um, and so, He's got this company now called FM Better Forms that um, does uh, some cool custom web publishing stuff that uh, more and more people are taking advantage of. And I thought you'd well, actually, Alan, it was Alan's idea um, that, um, that we might like to see Charles uh, show us his stuff. So um, currently he's in Toronto or near, in Toronto or near Toronto? Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. In, in Toronto, yeah. Uh, his... Uh, your most recent job in Toronto was was uh, with Ex Exoteric, right? Uh, yeah, so so um, I was uh, I was with them, but uh, um, consulted to a number of different dev houses and such. So oh, okay. So anyway, so he's been around a long time. Everybody knows him. You see him at DevCons all the time. He's uh, a popular speaker and, and participant. So uh, so Charles, take it away. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. My name is Charles Delfs once again. And um, although, although yes, I, I have some other um, ventures and things like that, I primarily spend my time with our main product. My company is Delfs Engineering, and we started off as a consultancy in, in hardware and software. Um, but it's a lot easier to develop software than it is to develop hardware when you want to have a lot of flexibility because you can, as you all know, you grab your laptop and you're good to go versus grabbing an oscilloscope and a soldering iron. All right. But that was my original first love. So that's kind of, kind of my background. Uh, Better Forms is a, a web publishing application. And it's funny that we say web publishing and I'm going to share my screen here because really um, that's a... That's really, I think, more of a FileMaker term, web publishing. I think that kind of, that's where I first heard it. And the rest of the world, we just say web apps or web, but it doesn't really matter. But the idea is, what BetterForms is, is it's a front end or user interface application and it's cloud-based and it connects to FileMaker. So it allows FileMaker developers to give access to their data to people outside of their regular uh, business ecosystem, meaning their employees primarily. I think FileMaker is a phenomenal product and I think everybody here agrees. That's why we're showing up. We almost all, always like it, all like it. But where FileMaker starts to get a little questionable is when it's, it's a, the best product we can come up with when the people who are using the application are on our payroll. The minute they're not on our payroll and they can electively choose to do so, they're not going to usually install FileMaker. Um, you can maybe get some jobbers, some, some suppliers, um, some clients to install FileMaker, but for the most part, it's pretty much no, no one's going to do that. So what people are really expecting is they're expecting a web application. And that's where we come in. We provide that, that interface. FileMaker is, or sorry, BetterForms is not really about replacing FileMaker applications. We're not here to, to replace licenses or replace seats or anything like that. What it really does is it extends FileMaker outside to the rest of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I want to do today is I figure what we'll do is we'll look at some applications, we'll understand what better forms can produce. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a little bit of live coding 
and um, we can maybe come up with a, uh, collectively, we'll come up with some ideas and we'll, we'll build out a, a, a rough, uh, rough proof of concept of, of the idea, just so that I can sort of prove to you that we can develop fairly quickly. So basically our team at uh, FM Better Forms, we have a team of uh, a couple people changed here and we added, so there's, there's minus two plus three in our group, but uh, we have a combination of UX designer, um, plus a couple of UX designer consultants that we that we also work with, but we also have a full-time one because uh, we do do application building ourselves and we need it for our own product. Um, we have some front-end, back-end engineers and, um, and some uh, admin people as well. So that's kind of our, our background. We've been around with FM Better Forms as a product now for, I guess we're going on to about five years or so. <clears throat> okay, so um, as we go through things, I'm gonna go reasonably quick and if I hear crickets, I don't know if I should go faster or slower. So I'm going to ask for some feedback. So by all means, when you got questions, uh, let me know and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll speed up or we'll slow down. So what I want to do is I want to talk about what typical use cases are. And we find our clients are building things that fall within two or three sort of categories, almost every application. Of course, they're all connected to FileMaker in the background. So that means they're, they're giving access to the data in some fashion or they're gathering the data. Although our company, our, our product is called FM Better Forms, it's really, if you could think of it more like FM web apps, right? Something along those lines. And what those categories are is, is a client has wants to have access, like one of your customers or your customer's customers in your cases, uh, wants to have access to your data and they need some kind of a portal. So something that they possibly log into and they get access to a whole bunch of uh, pieces of data. Usually these users are vary between very casual, maybe you use it once a week, once a day, or once a month to being on, on the application full-time um, like an employee would be. Uh, but for the majority of our users, they're usually just transient kind of on the app for a period of time to do their business. Um, that's what most portals are, are designed to do. Um, so that's the first category. The second one we have is where a user wants to gather information, but they don't necessarily need a whole application. They don't want to build out a whole portal. They just want to acquire a few things. Like when I registered for, uh, for this meetup group, I uh, was taken to a website, uh, a web direct uh, app. And I filled out some information. And then later on, I received an email. And then in the morning, I received another email. <clears throat> so that's a typical workflow. So what if you wanted to send the client out some information, um, send them out maybe a smart link, and then that client gets that smart link, they click on it, maybe it's from their mobile device, um, or maybe it's from uh, their tablet or, or uh, um, from the desktop, and they acquire some information, and then they submit that back in. And that's the end of the workflow. Right, very similar to that process, um, um, and that would be a really, really nice, nice addition. Now, what if that information? You can usually do that kind of stuff with some forms generating apps like uh, Jot Form and all these kinds of form builders, Gravity Forms, and there's you know probably about a dozen really popular forms programs. But what if you want to get information into that form, like a drop down list with populated with FileMaker data, or you wanted to have uh, show that particular person, not just the general public, but that particular person you're sending the email to. I want to show them their current state of their account. And from there, they can go in and maybe make a payment on that. So I send them out a link that says, please make a payment. We've just, you know, we've just created this invoice. Click here, they can make a payment online, that kind of thing. That's where Better Forms really, really shines as well. So that's the second category. And then the third category, we have about 20%, and that's a really, really high number, but it's about that 18, 20% of our users, and they have vertical applications. So uh, software as a service or a vertical, and what I define uh, those as is a vertical, sorry, a software as a service is something where you're selling the software to somebody else. So you're providing that software as the service. And the vertical is when the software is really the business. So you may not be selling the software, but the software is facilitating not just the workflows in the business, but it actually is a business. It's acting as some fashion to make sure like if the software stopped running, the business couldn't generate revenue. <clears throat> so that's kind of our use case for that. So let's look at a couple examples and I'll see if I can pick a, a, an example. I got a cup, I pulled up a couple here where we're talking and um, of each sort of each category. So the first one's a really, really simple portal. These guys, these guys here, EMGS, they have a um, medical gas inspection thing. So if you were to uh, get COVID and you were to go to uh, the hospital and you needed oxygen and you needed to turn on the spigot, the spigot isn't uh, where they get the oxygen and everything like that is, is 
all of that plumbing is inspected. And this company provides those inspections. And I think they do some maintenance and things like that too. Pretty common use case for uh, FileMaker. They had their, all of their, all of their information was stored in FileMaker. And uh, what was happening is the, the facility manager, say the hospital would email these guys up and say, we need the, uh, um, you know, Gurney 17 inspection of last August. Can you get it to us? And they would literally go into FileMaker, grab the file, pop it in an email and then send it out to them. So they built this portal. I'm connected to their dev machine, which I think is a Mac mini in the dev developer's office, but it doesn't really matter too much um, because better forms is very, very lightweight in certain terms of traffic going in and out of your server. And you can reduce it even quite, quite a bit more, sometimes down to just a few hundred bytes um, for, a, for a page. Most of the stuff that we see on the screen is not coming from FileMaker. It's coming from the better forms cloud, but it's dynamically connecting to your FileMaker server in the back end. So in this case, they have a very simple dashboard. You got the open issues, quotations, and invoices here. Um, the, the application is responsive. So that means if somebody pulls this up on a mobile device, that's not an issue. It's relatively easy to design responsiveness. You do have to add extra consideration because you have you know, width and height in a normal layout. But you also have another dimension as the it's it's the dimension or the ability for it to change size. So that's it is another factor. So you start to have to think about how things work. Like here, you can see the this uh, label. We didn't wrap it here. They didn't wrap it, but they put an ellipsis on here. So that's actually a better way of doing certain things instead of that label becoming ginormous and, and dropping down. So there's little things that you can do like that to make uh, make the user interface more responsive if if, if it's a, a if it's a need. Um, let's jump into say quotations here. So these are, this is a data table and you can go through and if I'm looking for a quotation of, I don't know, some five in it or something, um, I can filter this down and I can see all of these quotations. It looks like there's some kind of a download for this particular one. I'm not sure, there's probably no documents associated with these. I, I'm not really familiar with the, the database itself. I just use it for examples. And um, this data is dynamically pulled from FileMaker. So that means when I went over to this page right there, it just ran a script in FileMaker the FileMaker, FileMaker did a find, and we actually have some techniques that are make it way easier to do regular finds, um, some custom functions and things like that. But uh, it did a find, and with about two lines of code, it populated this field or this this uh, this table here, right? So that's a tremendous service just to be able to have access to that kind of data for for the outside world. Um, this particular one uses uh, basic authentication. So there's an email and password, which is managed. This is not the same as the account in FileMaker. And that's done for a very specific reason. You don't, you want to have your users as data in your database, not as something else ancillary, uh, uh, something else ancillary to the data, like a regular FileMaker uh, security is. And it's not so much for the, for the point of increasing or decreasing security, it's for the point of being able to manipulate it. Better forms also, we just came out with, uh, we just came out with, um, I gotta always think about this. We just came out with a, um, this is a new experimental app, but it's um, it uses uh, OAuth. So we can also use OAuth now to authenticate uh, applications as well. Um, so this is an application that I just whipped up. Uh, I'm actually whipping it up for pause on here um, and trying to get ready for that. And uh, it uses OAuth to sign in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, we'll jump to that one just yet. All right. So let's jump back over to here. And we'll go to reports. Um, like anything, since you're pulling data from FileMaker, this particular report takes a little bit longer to load. And it's not Betterform's fault. It's actually, in all honesty, it's the developer's fault because of whatever they're doing in the, in the terms of their script and they're running their script to perform the find. So it's exactly the same as FileMaker. Um, the same limitations, but also the same benefits as well. So here they have these uh, reports and they can get, you know, grab them. This is the real reason why these guys built this application and they can get a, 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 an A, I don't know what the heck this is, but an AEA report and they can grab that. That's just getting pulled out of a container and file maker, air exchange analysis, of course. Um, they can grab that from FileMaker and then there's a report. And that was the real secret sauce, what they wanted in terms of their portal. So that's how that sort of solved their, uh, solved their challenges that way. Um, you guys have any questions about anything so far? Crickets. Don't be shy. All right. Hopefully, I'm not muted. No, you're you're fine. Okay. Uh, we 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 can hear you fine. Um, I think people are are probably going to save their questions for for a little bit later. 
if you if i won't be monitoring but if you can monitor the chat and just okay. let me know if there are any questions in there guys so by all means please, please do it don't worry about interrupting it's all good if i feel less that if i feel we're getting off course i'm, I'm not shy so all right, there's, so that's a good example of a portal. Let's jump over to another one. Now, this is a little bit more high-end portal, and this is a software as a service. So this company here, um, they provide analytics and traceability for farmers and the whole supply chain of palm oil, uh, primarily in Indonesia and some in Thailand. So they their customers are companies like Cargill, um, Pepsi, and like these really big high-end food manufacturing or food supply chain companies. And those companies needed to, uh, there was a mandate that came out in 2020 that they have to have traceability to find out if their uh, palm oil, whatever they use that in all kinds of foods, um, if that came from like a, a rainforest or child labor or anything like that. <clears throat> so this is a dashboard that the client logs in now. So just, to, just so you understand the hierarchy of this, this whole thing, they have, there's, there's uh, um, the company who owns the software. They're called Demeter here. They have clients who are, they only have about eight or 10 clients and they're really high-end clients like Pepsi type clients. Um, those clients have a whole bunch of people, hundreds of people down their supply chain. So they need to issue surveys to those people that are down the supply chain. So what they do is they have this, this dashboard and I'm going to pull up a survey here so i was talking about that one of those use cases where we send a link this survey has a smart link and you can see it says something like token up here up in up in here and it's a smart link in the sense of when this application loads the user doesn't need to authenticate themselves we're making the assumption that we know their email and they're going to fill out some data so it's not like it's a high security thing and they're going to fill out the data um, from this link in their email so as soon as they hit this link the application loads and we know that it's the uh, uh, Pancor oil company and this is when the this is the um, time frame for this uh, report and so on they can go through the app and I'll just walk through the app this is something that that a farmer or a, a mill or a processing company or something like that further down the supply chain would receive All right they proceed onto the survey um, they can fill out some various pieces of information here and this is all powered 100% live by FileMaker. Okay. Um, so from here, this one doesn't have any uh, current suppliers. I just want to make sure that I am in there, the, the staging environment before I go in and change something here. So I can add a supplier here. So I'm going to search for a supplier and we'll search for uh, BA, something like that. And that just did a live search with FileMaker. So it actually ran a script, right? Now, has anybody done here done any um, traditional custom web publishing with FileMaker, like PHP stuff and things like that? If you I have, have, I have. Okay, perfect. If you have, you'll know that there's a whole separate database, no, sorry, database, code repository for that code. So you have your FileMaker code, you have your PHP code, which is depending on the style of PHP you're doing, it's usually mixed in with the front end code. Um, and then there's the business logic code for the PHP code. So that P, that's kind of mixed in with the PHP stuff. And that's what that's what's, you know, maybe doing the search, generating the records and things like that. So that means when I need to add a middle name field, I have to change my, my front end and I have to change the UI on the front end and I have to change the business logic on the front end to support that extra field. And the most common thing I hear is people get in, they, they, they say, well, we had this person develop it, but now we can't maintain it easy. And that's where I used to come in because I used to always get called because I, that, that's my background um, and what we used to specialize in. And we would go in and, and maintain their code. So what we what Better Forms really does, is it gives you the ability to maintain that yourself. So we're not running. There's no separate code base here that's doing this search. When I, when I type in this, let's type in B-A-Y. When I do that, that ran a script in FileMaker. It passed B-A-Y as a parameter. And it did a search for across various fields in FileMaker, like things like the name and the supplier and maybe whatever other uh, fee factors or are, 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 um, criterion are, are required. And it returned a found set of data. And we just did this here. So that means when you need to change that, we want to add a um, contact person and we want to add a contact and we want to be able to search by contact or something like that. It's a FileMaker change. It's not a front end change by that. So that's a really, really powerful feature.
All right. So then they go with these with this particular survey as an example. They can go in and they can they can add and say, like, oh, "That's great. Let's go C H A." I just like to see if there's any companies with my name. Not exactly, but we'll take it. And they can add that in. They're done. There's a toaster alert. Better form supports virtually any kind of UI, but built in, we have a lot of uh, a number of um, different things. This is a custom custom uh, navigation because that was what the, the UX designer came up with. But these things here are buttons. These are all stock buttons. This is a, a regular better forms data table and so on. So they also have some ability to do filtering. They can filter by country. And these are all dynamic. This is what's interesting is this is this value list is based on the found set of data. So you can see there's only two in here, but if I was to add more. So we have a lot of, there's a lot of little nuances in this application. This app is pretty polished. Most FileMaker apps, in all honesty, are not very polished at all. We'll give them maybe a 30% polish compared to something that faces the outside world. And then I would say the average portal that people make facing the outside world will give it a 70%, let's say, of polishedness. And if you're selling that software, you have to take it up to about an 85 plus, um, mainly because the person who's using it can elect to not use it, right? So that's why, that's why there's a lot of detail that's gone into this particular app. And then they go through and then their main application, better form supports things like card windows and modals in here. In this case, this is a, um, this is a uh, card window, which is effectively another layout inside superimposed on top of the page here. You can control all of those kinds of things, make it turn it into a tray and do things like, um, this is a mask of this area over here is what it's called technically. And I, if I click on the mask, it'll close, but you don't have to, you can enable and disable and all those, all those kinds of things like that as well. And incidentally, that showed up when I went onto this tab. And this is, this is one of these little touches that you want to think about when you're building apps. You notice it didn't show up anymore. So that uses a cookie. We don't want to track that in FileMaker because that's like just more extra garbage data that we have to hang on to. And some developers feel great about putting that into a table. Totally unnecessary, right? In this case, it uses a cookie and it says, oh, there's a cookie. So it shows up once per day. So if I was to log into the app and do this tomorrow, I'd see that little alert again. They didn't want it too annoying, right? So it's very subtle. <clears throat> Remember, I was talking about a supply chain. These are the kinds of things that you can do with web apps. And you can do it, I guess, technically with a FileMaker app as well, but it's a lot harder, is I want to get somebody else, one of my suppliers, to fill out some data because I don't want to fill out all this. Like I, I look in here as a track putting. And if we look at their data, if we look at their data, they have all kinds of stuff going on here. And I don't really want to fill all of this out. I want to get them to fill it out and save an exit. And so what I can do is I can literally click here. I enter the client's email and the client gets a subset of this survey sent to them. So if you think of a supply chain, supply chains have various nodes that go down the node and we're passing the, the data acquisition onto them. So now literally for one, one company can have hundreds of, of downwind suppliers, right? Suppliers of suppliers and everything, but along, along that chain, right down to the farmer who's, who's, uh, who's uh, working the land. All of that data when they're done gets pushed back into FileMaker and then it gets surfaced here. So that's, that's how this whole app uh, works. And this is, uh, this is their product. Um, they have ability to do a bunch of filtering Oh, this is new, actually. I didn't see this before, I don't think. So you can do some, some custom range filtering and things like that. They can filter stuff in here. Uh, what else? Let's see if I wanted to find all the companies with no data. I can do that. And you can see the dynamics and everything updates. So it's an analytics dashboard. Um, I wanted to find just these 10%. Let me clear this. And let's find everybody who's like low in the, the 10 to 11%. So now I, I got this group of people. Um, this is not built into better forms, these, these charts, because there's so many, if you've done any charting and stuff like that in uh, FileMaker, you know there's zillions of chart libraries, Chart.js and graphics charts and Apex charts and Google charts and all these chart companies. So it's not practical for us to add all of that stuff in. So what we've done is we've given you the ability to use virtually any third party uh, library and you can bring that in. We have examples for most of it. So if there is something that you're using that you don't, um, you don't find an example for. It's not usually a problem. Book a call. We have great support. We'll jump on a call, either myself usually or some of our team, and we'll build it up and we'll turn it into an example because that way it kind of helps other people down the road. And 
<clears throat> excuse me, this is an example of, I think this is using Apex charts as a library, right? And you can configure all of these kinds of things and stuff like that as well. So that's how that, that's how that's sort of wired up. Um, finally, the, the end sort of process uh, that this particular uh, application does is it generates a report. So if I click here, it says requesting a report and what's happening now that got queued on the server. And now the report is, this report's fairly intensive in terms of data because it's going through all of these. Imagine there's one record at the top, there's another 45 records here. And then each one of these has data down below and it's, it's building all of that data. So this is actually running real time on the server and I can actually navigate away from here. And if you notice, I come back and it's still, I just finished, didn't have enough time. Um, and it generates the whole report real time in, uh, in, 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 um, in uh, um, the database so and it's based on the found set of records here so it's it's a really really powerful feature that uh, um, that they they wanted for this so that's kind of a more polished thing anybody have any questions about this portal and this particular use case yeah i was i was wondering um <laughs> Okay, I was about to ask if you needed to take a break to drink something. No, so, no, yeah, okay. yeah. I'll just, I'll just gulp it right down. Okay. Um, so, um, how difficult is it to incorporate other libraries? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll do a bit of live coding. Hang on to that okay. question. Okay. We'll grab a custom date picker and we'll throw it into our app. Okay. Right. Um, um, because it's, it's fairly easy. Now, every library is different, right? Like if you've ever touched any of those libraries, like for web viewer stuff, you'll know some of them take a huge amount of setup and some of them take less setup. We can't abstract that out and make it easy not to keep the flexibility. So um, basically it really comes down to the library. Some of them are, it's, it's as easy as adding a script tag in the, uh, one of the site settings and that's it. That's pretty much the only thing. And then start using the component wherever you want. Mm -hmm. So. Let's look at uh, one more use case and uh, let's go here. This is kind of a, so this project's been around for about four years. This is their second, or maybe five years, even six years. They were around before Betterforms as a product. It was built in Betterforms, but it was, um, we were, we were using our framework for clients and then we made it public. Um, so these guys here are, um, they provide software as a service as well. But what they're doing is they're selling, um, they have a building permit registration and tracking software. It does all the inspections. You want to add a second floor into your garage or something like that, the software would, would handle it. So they have an iPad app, which the inspector goes around, perfect use for iPad and FileMaker Go, and they go around and they can collect everything. They have FileMaker client running in the county offices or wherever you get your building permits, and that's running in all their terminals there. And then they needed to have a way for the average uh, average um, person who wants to add a deck onto their backyard and they need to get a building permit or whatever they have to do for that, um, give them access to that. So here I would normally create an account, but I think I have one here. And I'm just gonna log in and, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is their app. Now, right now we're connected to um, their development or their master and their development branch. There's a lot of ways of building software as a service. And the reason why I'm spending a little bit more time on this is because I think it's a really powerful outlet for us FileMaker developers. I deal with a lot of other developers outside of the FileMaker community, um, primarily JavaScript um, developers. And they are, I hate this term personally, but they're coders, right? They're people who just work in the code. They don't interact with clients uh, I can almost guarantee almost everybody here probably talks to their clients in some fashion. Um, they don't, they don't design stuff. They just build it right where we're really, really lucky. We have the opportunity to interact with our clients, which means we can also have the opportunity to sell our clients more value. And that's really, I think where the sweet spot for better forms is um, in this case, they had this, they had their FileMaker software, but now they can go and charge more for their software um, by offering services like a portal here. Um, this, this other application, this was scratch built for that purpose for the analytics part. But this one here, this is an add-on to a FileMaker. So originally, if you think of a multi-tenant, uh, or sorry, uh, if you think of FileMaker solutions, and I'm gonna just draw on my screen here, and you think here's your FileMaker server, your FMS, and there we go. And uh, that's pretty good. I didn't have time to 
to paint it or build it to scale. So, so I apologize. Um, so here's your FileMaker server and there's your, there's your, your one file that's running on there. And then another client comes along and they say, hey, we want to use your roofing application. And it's like, okay. And then you make a copy of that. So you, now you got two of these and you got two versions of it. And this is version one, we'll call it. And this at the first, the first is version one, but then later on, this becomes one point one or something like that because they wanted a special color changed. And as your application grows, you end up with all of these siloed, siloed versions. Now, some developers are exceptionally meticulous. Um, the developer of this particular app, he's very, very meticulous with his version control. Really, really excellent act, actually. Um, but not everybody is. So that becomes really hard. So the nice thing about better forms is better forms can kind of sit as an application. We'll call it better forms here. And their web clients connect out from here. And this can connect to one database or it can connect to all of your databases. So whatever your architecture is for your existing clients, it's very, very easy to incorporate that. Now you still have one single front end Okay, so you're not maintaining multiple code bases. You're moving in the right direction. The holy grail is this. It's, it's one front end, one database back end, and that's it. That's, that's the goal of, of software development, right? And then multi-tenant from here, right? Multi-tenant in FileMaker is super, super hard, as everybody probably knows, because you have to lock everything down. FileMaker is inherently unlocked, and then you have to clamp everything down. And um, I use the Walmart metaphor if you're in a Walmart and you're trying, if you run a Walmart and you're trying to um, prevent shoplifting, it's pretty challenging. You know, you can have the, uh, you can put the cameras, you can put the beepers at the door. You can, you can have, uh, you know, a security uh, section 17 or whatever it is, right? You can have all of these mitigation kind of things, but it never prevents a shrinkage. If you have a McDonald's drive through I don't know if anybody has ever really stolen a burger. In fact, I have to pay before they even hand me my Mac, right? So it's just by the nature of the design, they've eliminated all the security issues. And Better Forms takes that same approach. What we do is we have a very, very narrow, narrow opening that control comes in. So if this is the outside world, this is say Better Forms and the outside world, we take a very, very small, and this is your FMS over here, very, very small opening to get access to your data. And this is very governed, very strict, strictly governed. So it's much more like the, um, much more like the drive-through than the, than the Walmart. So that means to a multi-tenant organization, it really comes down to adding another, you know, you have your client, you add an, or your users maybe that are already in your system, you add another table on top called organizations and there's your multi-tenant. You have an ID, ID user, ID organization and you attach that IE organization to the entity, any of the data entities that you want and you're off. So it's really relatively easy to build this multi-tenant type thing. This particular one goes by the domain and actually not only multi-tenant, but it goes to the different, different databases. That's what it's doing. So what they do here, this is kind of neat. And I'm going to, I'm going to actually, um, let's see, I'm going to open this up here because my browser, there's something I noticed the other day there's a compatibility and it's not, it wasn't better forms. It's my really old machine here. That's on its way out. So I apologize, but you can pull it up yourself here as well. So let me see if that's the right password. Yes, it is. All right. So what they, um, what's kind of neat here is this is a building permit. So I can say new application. I can go into this building permit and here's the permit. And one of our UX designers, her name is Anna. She consulted on this project. And guys, I'm just going to turn on my uh, my air conditioning. So let me know if there's too much background noise. I tried to pre-cool my room as much as possible, but otherwise I'm going to get shinier and shinier on here. Okay. So I apologize if that's too noisy in the background. All right. So um, what Anna did when she designed this, she consulted with them because a lot of times when you have something really, really fine-tuned, unless you have your own UI person, it's really worth the money to, to spend on, on, on that in terms of a project. And uh, she made this really complex form really simple. And it doesn't feel very big. This is what you got to do to fill out, uh, to get a building permit. But if you could see the original form, it was so much bigger, but there's a lot of conditional logic. Like for example, that shrinks that up. This is, there's extra data that's inside a, a modal in here. Um, this same as applicant. So it really reduces the visual barrier to that, that person. Remember anybody who's using FileMaker outside of FileMaker's user base 
is electively using that software most of the time. So they can go and do something else. They may say, holy crud, this is way too much work to fill out this thing. I'm just going to go and do it. So the company wants people to fill out their forms, right? So you want to make it a joy to fill out. There's a little progress indicator. This is not native to FileMaker, or sorry, to better forms. It was built in better forms. So in other words, we don't have a widget to do this exactly. They built this widget, right? And to, to do it and to make it all work like that. After they submit the application, they go into the projects. And remember, this is all live FileMaker data. There's some badging going on here. And I guess you can go into here and here are some, they don't have any plan checks or inspections, but I think, um, I guess based on the stage, I can't book an inspection, but maybe there's one over here. I think maybe the first one, let me see. I thought there was one, yeah, okay. So you can see here is some conditional logic here, right? This didn't show up before, right? So it's a very subtle detail to UX, but it's really, really important. I was just on a call with, uh, with uh, a developer this morning and he was building a simple payment portal. Send the user a magic link, they can make a payment and that's it. That's all it does. And it tenders it with Stripe. And one of the things he noticed is he says, well, I have to build more, more UI. I have to build all these states. What happens if it's a failed payment? What happens if it's a success? What happens if the balance is zero, right? He has to handle all of these things. And you do have to do that. That's not a better forms burden. That is a, I'm building an app for the rest of the world uh, issue. So we don't normally uh, on average as file maker developers in encounter that because most of the time, those people are on a payroll. So it's like, uh, Al, if that if I go and process that and that doesn't go through, just hit the button again. Oh, okay. It's got a post-it note, hit button twice. Sometimes if you've, you've seen it, they put it right on here, only click this button once right on the display, right? And they're doing all those things. You can't do that with a public facing application. So you have to build stuff a little cleaner to a, a little higher standard on average, um, depending on what the user is doing. So that's what this uh, app does. It does a couple other nice things. You can generate uh, downloads and stuff like, um, I don't know what this one does here. Oh, this is new. I guess you can upload some files here by the looks of it. And there is something that um, pay invoice download. Let's see what that one does. That's generating a file maker. Okay, here we go. So this, that was dynamically generated real time on FileMaker, And then the, the, um, the PDF downloaded to here. And I guess this is a, some kind of a invoice bill thing. And there's a spot in here. I thought it was request inspection, but I don't think you can. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here is, where was that? If you notice, this is kind of interesting. If you look at the dates here, let me go ahead and look at this, all right? I can't book on certain dates because that particular office of this particular tenant of the software is not open on Fridays. So that data came from that very specific backend thing and it conditionally showed up on the front end which is a really nice little experience experience and i think there's something about am and pm as well in there i'm not sure what it is i remember seeing that once but i'm not i'm not positive so that's another example if you guys i don't know if anybody has any questions about that does it feel like filemaker does this or yeah it looks it looks like it could be filemaker yeah yeah, you think so? it looks it looks like somebody could do it in in, in WebDirect. I'd um, like to see that. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm well, going to no, no. be a little. I, bit I'm more. saying it looks like it. Okay. Obviously, yeah. you know, here's, obviously here's the first thing not, that you can't do in things WebDirect, you... though. All right, you can't do this in WebDirect. Well, here's yeah. the next thing. Oh, what's this? Oops, I just can, hit refresh. Don't want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then I have a big modal, and it's resizes. Come on, guys. You know that you can't do that. That's why we're here today. All right. Uh, so, well. In fairness, in fairness, you can't really control, not like this. You can't, right? You can't refresh. You can't hit the back button, right? Um, oh, definitely, yeah. So those kinds of things. I'm still logged in onto all of, the, all of this as well. Let me just clean up my desktop a little bit here, right? So there are certain limitations, right? Certain types of things. You can reproduce UI in WebDirect, yes, right? And I'm, Better Forms is not really competing against WebDirect. It's going right. where, it's doing things that WebDirect can't do. Right, it's not practical um, that other application, so the billing permanent application. That's not practical to have that in WebDirect, mainly because the general public expects things like reloads, expects things like back back arrows, and being able to navigate. And look, I'm I'm using my magic mouse here to to navigate. Right, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, that's something that's really really expected. Eventually, maybe one WebDirect will have that at some point, and. At some point, we'll probably add some other technology into our stack as well, right? So I'm not saying that's the only thing, but 
these are really, really important features if you want to take your software to the next level. And if you want to be able to offer your clients something that looks like a web app because it is, feels like a web app because it is, does things like auto enter. They can bookmark page pages, right? They can right click and copy and paste. So I can do some of that with WebDirect, right? Those kinds of things are really, really important in terms of apps. And that's really where, where the sweet spot for better forms is. Um, even things like, um, what is this? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, OAuth sign, up, sign login. So here's an example of that where we're logging in right and now i'm logged in right this actually by the way this is a real-time application this is a um, an experimental application that we're going to be coming out with potentially as a new product and it's a uh, it's a code editor for filemaker web viewers and um so if you're interested in that uh let me know if you do any web viewer work because it, it's going to be make a, like a be a, a game changer uh as far as editing code and sharing code amongst community and things like that you can make projects live and you can do all kinds of uh all kinds of neat stuff there all right, so let's jump back here. I'm going to close some of these tabs and let's see how it works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my FileMaker demo database. All right, which is a pretty minimal database. It just has some tables. We'll look at those. I was expecting those buttons to move over, but they, they sort of can. All right, and let's close this off for a second as well. And we'll close this one here. All right, and let's jump over here. And what's the use case that you think potentially that you have a client or you could use better forms for? Does anybody have any, you know, sometimes a lot of times I, the wheels start to get turning and you start to come up with ideas. Well, I had one that popped into mind. Uh, it's an organization that has people all over the country that are doing uh, training and stuff and they have to submit reports right. uh, from multiple remote locations. Okay, perfect. So they have, uh, so the report would be probably a list of locations, um, like what location you're at, or do you know what location they're at by the database? Well, um, they're, they travel around, they'll meet with people, they'll do training, they'll do events, you know, where they count the number of people that were there and the number of engagements and right. So and, it's basically analytics and, kind of gathering or demo, yeah. And, then, and then also a report on what the training was about and stuff and, right. and the progress of the client to, toward their certification, stuff like that. Oh, excellent. Excellent use case. Um, what data does the app need from FileMaker? What stops them from just submitting a form through like jot forms and using Claris connect and, and, wiring it up that way. Still writing the proposal. I'm still, still doing the needs analysis on them, but right, so you're um, looking at options of how it would work then. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Let's, let's look at that as an example, right? We'll start yeah. off. Um, we'll start off really simple. I got this real pa simple page and you guys can like, oh, if you want to, hey, if anybody along. else has an, has anything, I don't want to monopolize this, but if anybody else has, an, yeah, you guys got has some something that they would want him to walk through, uh, feel free to, to jump up. Okay. All right. People have spoken. Or All right, perfect. <laughs> so case, I have a real simple page here, and I'm going to go over to a better forms editor. The editor is cloud-based, so we're editing stuff in a browser. And from here, I have my demo app, but I, have, uh, I can go to my apps, and I can see all my apps. And in my case... Um, we do some work for other companies as well. So we can, you know, you can see if you are a developer and you're working across organizations, they can invite you to, uh, to share in their code. And you can see like, oh, here's, I'm working with these guys here and those guys there and so on. So, but I'm gonna search for my demo app. There it is there. And better form supports various environments. So uh, this is a new feature that we're just rolling out now. And basically the general gist of it is now you have development staging and production environments. And that gives you things like version control. You can see my production environment here is at version 14, but in my development environment has had my page uh, called Demo Corp job application. It has uh, been modified. So it's slightly different than the other one. And later on, we would do this later as well, but we can deploy from this development and we can deploy it to production and we can go through that process and we can deploy the entire application. So what that allows you to do is set up totally standalone environments 
with whatever configuration you want. I want to share the same database, but I want to have just dev and production front ends. I want to have separate databases, separate servers, um, totally free, totally flexible to do that. All right. So it's a true development environment in that sense. All right. So I'm going to work in this one here and I'm going to jump over to my pages. Pages are the, um, I'm going to jump over to my pages and this is considered a page. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to find that one's called job application. There it is there. So let's edit that guy. All right. And this is how we, how we go about editing things. Editing is pretty simple. Um, we use JSON to define the page. So it's basically data driven. And the reason for that is it gives us a ton of flexibility over custom customization. So here I have this basically two objects. And if you're not familiar with JSON, that's okay. No one's going to uh, shame you or anything. What I've found is the developers, and we have uh, several hundred developers using our platform. And I would say a good, when we started off a few years ago, three years ago, I would say 50% of them had never used JSON. Now I'd say it's about 20 to 15%-ish, roughly. And literally I would check back in and then we do a lot of onboarding. We do like about two hour session to begin with, and then we'll do half an hour to hours sessions until your app is in production to help you uh, get up and running for your first app. So it will help you a lot. And I would check back in on them within in like a couple of days later. And it's like, suddenly they're, they're in there and they're manipulating the JSON and they're like Neo and the matrix. It's like, I know Kung Fu they're they're I know JSON. Right. So they're really, really, uh, they're really uh, uh, taking on well because it's not a language. It's just a formatting, right? That's really what it is. It's a data presentation. So, okay. So I have two fields here. I got two of these. I got two of them over here. It says first name, last name. And I got one here. Here's a label. It says first name. And maybe I want to say optionally nickname, something like that. And I'm going to save that. And let me go back over to here. And you notice it. Just a second here, let's just do this. And where's my thing here? All right, and then we've just made that change right there. I'm gonna move this over so I can see it as we work on it. We'll keep it there, okay. And my Zoom is taking up a whole bunch of space as it naturally does, so. Can All you right. put it on another screen? Uh, it's okay, it's, I just minimized it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So we want to add some fields. So you said, well, we got to gather some fields. So let's maybe add some kind of uh, uh, location. I think you said something about location. So that would be an input field. Um, we could use something like Google, uh, Google places to look it up, but maybe there's some feet places that it wouldn't, um, wouldn't pick up. So this is a snippet library. It's basically little scrub sn sn uh, snippets of JSON that we're going to copy. I'm just going to copy this. It's copied and I'm gonna literally paste it in here. And, and I'm gonna relabel the label to location. Later on, we'll pull some live data from FileMaker. The model, I'll talk about that right now, actually. All right, so here we go. So here's our location field on here. So let me just populate this with some stuff. And location, Toronto. O-N-C-A, shameless plug. <laughs> and um, so in FileMaker, we can go into the, oops, we can go into, I hit the keystrokes and I think what, what it is. Uh, we can go into the data uh, viewer and we can inspect, you know, the fields that are on that layout and, and do some calculations. Better form is very similar, right? So we have this thing called DevTools. I'm just gonna open up the DevTools, oops. Uh, and if we look, I'm going to hide that for a second because I was left over from some time before. Um, but I have, it says actually product. That's interesting. It says product and, and it's the, the data is under, underneath this product that was left over from a demo too. So I'm going to change that. So we can change how this data is presented. Maybe I don't want it underneath a product. I want it underneath a person object. I like to put my data and in sub objects that are uh, aptly named. So... Oops, wrong save, save, okay. And this data is not really associated with, with uh, this is interesting, browsers are so smart, okay? I only changed the association. This is something I've never noticed before. I've only changed the association of where this data belongs to and my type ahead and my browser recognized it. 
because it says person.name versus product.name. It didn't type ahead. And I didn't notice why I didn't do that before. Now this is from a technical aspect, nothing changed, almost nothing changed from the browser's perspective, but some really deep underlaying code, but browsers are incredibly brilliant. Um, we don't give them, we don't give them credit, credit for that stuff. So here, here it is. Here's my person object. And I got a name. It says name. I'm going to probably change that to name first. And it says description. I'm going to change that to name last. So we'll just fix those things up right now. So it says name last. And that's the person's name, the location. We got the location in here. That's underneath. It's not underneath the person object. That's fine. And then let's see what else. We, what else do we need on this to, information to gather? You said, was there an assessment or something that they had to do? Yes. All right. and, well, and, and also a, like a, an inspection or? Yeah, an inspection, uh, but also a, 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 well, like you said, an assessment of their level and their progress towards certification. Right. Okay. So um, what kind of input field would that be? I'm going to make it a really easy one. I'm going to put a checkbox. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, we'll, we'll make a checklist. We'll take a checkbox. But if you, if you have some ideas, let me know and we'll build it out. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously a, a, a series of notes fields, you know, the kind of thing I would put in a separate table in as a, as a portal in FileMaker. You know, where you can keep a, a long a running set of notes uh timestamp notes sure okay so like a loggy kind of thing yeah yeah perfect so here's a really interesting thing is we're always thinking from this paradigm of in filemaker of of context right in fact we even got a podcast called called it now um it's always about filemaker is always about context and we're really hardwired for that as FileMaker developers, we're thinking about, okay, well, I'm on this piece of data and I'm gonna have to do this and that. But when it comes to the web, you don't need to think like that at all anymore. You can almost really dissociate that idea and get what you want and then work backwards to, to wire it up. And what I mean by that, uh, did you get a high mark? Let's see, I did. I'm just, I'm just um, adding a checkbox on here. Did you get a high mark? I did, that's great. And I'm gonna make it a little wider too. And let's add a notes area. So that'll be like a text area. So we'll add that in here. And boom, boom, boom. Text area, and we'll call it your notes. And I'm gonna call it comments for the for the data field. Now it's not a FileMaker data field. Now that's weird. That's way way the heck over here. And the reason of this is because we have to think in that extra dimension now. So if I was to make this smaller, it'd probably be fine, right? It looks perfectly fine on a small device, but it's kind of awkward over here. It's not awkward if it was a FileMaker layout, because a lot of times we just throw stuff really wide in on the field, on the screen, but for a web interface, it looks odd. So I want to move this down over to here. So things naturally flow from left to right, new line left to right. And I want this one here happens to be six units out of 12 units wide. So in other words, it's half a screen wide, this box, even though the text doesn't cover that. I want to put to clear the rest of this line and then on the net and move this over to the next line. So I'm gonna grab a clearing element here. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna stick it right in front of that. Oops, do there. There we go. All right, so now it's looking better, right? So that's kind of the effect that I want. My notes, we're missing one key thing. If this is a, 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 an online form of some sort, anybody know what it is? Bonus points? Submit button. Yeah, yeah, there we go, a button, right? So let's grab a button. Yeah. All right. And let's go here and put that in there. And we're not going to call it push me. We'll call it um, report. Report in, check in. I don't know, something like that. All right. Now, so oh, there's that same, same thing there. Let's move that button to the bottom because it looks weird on web. So uh, where buttons should be more vertical, that's just a normal convention. And if you look at your FileMaker layouts, chances are you don't have as many buttons down at the bottom. You have them probably more up here and stuff. And we don't think about that, but this looks incredibly awkward. And it's only because you're seeing it in the context of a web. And that's why it's so important to think about design as well. Right? So that's your, your own brain. Well, even in FileMaker though, if, if you're going down the page and you don't yeah. want to hit the button until you're done with everything, you would definitely put it at the bottom yeah. as well. Agreed. Yeah. But if it's something short, yeah. I usually see people have buttons up. I mean, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. Most yeah. desktop applications will still have a lot of stuff up here, 
but online things when you're working from top to bottom, because it's uh, if you think from a mobile aspect, that just makes sense, right? It's having to scroll up. So let me save that and fix that button. There we go. That's looking pretty good there. All right. So now we need to wire up the button. So this is really important. Um, we don't know as a, as a app builder, we don't know what you want to build. So we need to give you a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to connect things up. So, so far we've built this page. It's super scalable. We can send it out to thousands of people and they can, uh, they can all report in. It's cross-browser compatible. Um, it's mobile, mobile compatible. Everything's out of the box. I haven't done anything yet here. But I need to wire it up to FileMaker. So I need to tell this button that when I click it, I click, 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 nothing's happening. What to have, what to do. So I got some buttons in FileMaker. And as you know, buttons have actions, right? So um, here it is, action. And what the action is, run a single script step or, or, or um, run a script. Better form is the same thing, right? You see there's a key called actions. And we can put actions in there. Like if I was to put something like an alert, which is like a toaster alert, Here's a generic alert, and I stuck it in here. It's an action. And I hit that. There's my toaster alert showing up. So I made that alert run. If you've ever had to code something like this by hand, that was a day probably doing that. Uh, I'm not exaggerating. That's, it, it would take a long time unless you use some third-party module and then start building a whole framework up. It's a lot of work to make that, especially to get it to do things like disappear and stuff. All right, so well, that alert's no good for us. What we really want to do is we want a FileMaker to hook into the application. And this is a design thing. We want FileMaker to always be in, in charge. The database and the data logic, the business logic should always come from FileMaker. So I'm going to search for a hook, which is um, an action, which gives basically tells better forms to run a script inside FileMaker. All right. So now when I click this, it's going to run a script over in FileMaker. Now, uh, I've got a little bit more to do here. I have gone ahead beforehand and I've added a server on here, one of my servers. And we've also gone through, um, and we've also gone through into FileMaker over here. We've pasted in some custom functions. Where are they? Manage custom functions. We pasted some custom functions in here and we pasted in some script steps. Okay, and that's what we've done. So it's a empty, some empty folders of scripts. So let's go over there. So these are the scripts that, that Better Forms um, starts off with, or some of them anyway. This is my demo account, so it has some extra stuff in here. But there's basically a folder, and the scripts are in sort of two categories. The common things, like what happens when somebody logs in, that can be from any page, and then the page contextual things, right? So I have one called job application, and that this folder of scripts is effectively connected to this interface over here. And in here, I have a script called on utility. And there's nothing in there right now. <clears throat> there is a, one logging statement at the end and it exits with true at the end, at the other end, sorry. Um, and that's it. That's all the only thing that's there so far. So now what we want to do is when somebody sub pushes a button, we just want a hello world. I want a show custom dialogue, right? And I basically want to say, you know, thank you for your report. All right, something along, something along those lines. But of course, that's a FileMaker thing. Better form's almost as easy. It's set variable. I'm going to go quick here. Dollar dollar BF action. Better forms uh, communicates with some globals. One of them is called BF actions. And all we have to do is populate that with, with a bit of data. And when this process returns back to the front end, Better forms will automatically take that data and do whatever it needs to. And I want to show modal. So I'm going to type modal if I can. There we go. And this is one of the custom functions. It's called BF set action show modal. All it is is just a JSON object it's building, but it's making it easy for me. Title, the icon type, I'm going to say success. That's an icon type for this modal dialog. Body is going to be what I just wrote. Theme, let's go. All the cool kids using the dark theme. My computer is too old for that. All right, there we go. And that is it, right? So I used a custom function that came with better forms, populated that. It's like a show modal, show custom dialogue, same difference. Save that. Now we can go back over to here. And let me just bring this a little bit wider. It's going into mobile, mobile mode. And that's it, right? Nice. So there we go. So that's our end-to-end -end connection, right? 
tons of web functionality here that's going on. Okay, like you can't express how much there's, there's a ton of stuff happening here, right? The data from here is getting sent into the script. We haven't done anything with it yet, right? But better forms or sorry, the file maker is deciding what should happen. Maybe it's success. Maybe, hey, you've already reported for this reporting period, right? Some kind of conditionals, right? That's a business logic and that should stay in FileMaker with the rest of the business logic, right? We're showing things like modals, which is another challenge to do normally. You know, it's uh, more work to, to, to code out. And um, later on, maybe we can add some validation too. And then the rest of it's really easy. This is all pure native FileMaker. I mean, really, this is FileMaker too, right? That's as native FileMaker as it is as well. Um, it's a go-to layout. And I want the layout called Applications. There's a job Applications. Where is it here? Uh, I'm blind. There we go. All right. And go-to layout. And we want to create a new record. And we want to set fields in that record. Now, let's look at what the fields, the data it's going to get. Okay, I'm going to put some stuff in here. Let's have a look at the data underneath here. Um, we have some stuff inside this person object. It doesn't have to be, but we just put it in there. And we have some stuff in here. So I'll leave that open. So we want to set the field. And I happen to have a field called name first. And the data coming from better forms is in another global variable called BF underscore model. BF model is this thing that's up here. This products was uh, left over from a demo. I'm going to take that out in a second. Um, but this is this whole thing is the model. It's the, the, the data shape. And we call it a model because it's not attached to a record. It's not attached to a label, a table, occurrence, a field uh, at all. It's just the free form data. So within BF model, we want to do JSON get element. And out of that, we want to get the person dot name first. Right. Let me just have a look. Person dot name. Uh, I think we, is it? Oh, we didn't change that. I thought we... I changed the last one, but I thank you very much. Someone's paying attention. Bonus points. Right. <laughs> Oops. That's okay. Sorry. It would, would have been a bug and I would have looked bad. It's like, and this is name last. And I don't know if I set the field on this. So did I? Yes, I did. Uh, name first, name last. Okay, that's correct. So there we just grab that data out of there and let's grab the location. So let's just do another one of these. And I'll set location. I don't think I have, I have one called address close enough. And this would be, oh, that's that last is spelled wrong too. All right. Remember JSON is uh, case uh, sensitive. So this is called location. There we go. And let me just fix that one up because it's not going to work otherwise. There we are. All right. And I think what do we got one more field, two more fields. And we're done. So this is the, the notes um, feed. got Oops. high mark because I didn't know what it was. So approved. Checkbox. Yeah. yeah, I got one called approved. It's, it's a checkbox. There we go. And then the last one's comment. I think I have one called objectives or something or comments. Comments, comments, there's comments. It's really common, common field. All right. Notes, comments, whatever you want to do. I'm putting this flat in one field file. You can set it into wherever you want, because it's just data, right? So you can put it into anything you want in FileMaker. We do have to do one thing, we have to commit the record. Okay, and the reason for that is this is running on server and it would normally keep that record open. So I wanna explicitly close it um, there. Now, if we have many people modifying this and stuff like that, all FileMaker rules apply. Maybe you need to use some kind of um, transaction and test to see if you can open the record and stuff like that. If the only people who are accessing this table are web users and they're never gonna hit the same record, this is always doing a new record in this case, there's no reason for it, right? There's no reason to, to try to lock the record and do all of that kind of stuff. It's a very, very, very small use case. We've built literally or helped build literally 100 plus applications, web apps. And there's been only one time so far that we truly needed to do some transactional stuff. Um, mainly because there's nobody there's you know there's not somebody at the front desk and they're starting to type in a field and they go, go for lunch that doesn't happen on the web right they're explicitly doing these workflows 
So it's not something you usually have to worry about too much. All right, so let's have a quick code review. Make sure that's not wrong. First, last address, prove comments. I don't know if you guys do this. I started to do it more often and I usually catch stuff. All right, I think we're good. Let's go over to our job applications table. We'll delete all the records. I got a new record. This is, let me hit new. This is what the records look like. It's a pretty fancy layout. Did it myself. And uh, you can see why we have a full-time UX guy. All right. So I think we're good to go. So let's try it. So thank you for your report. And nice. boom. So that's the very, very core essence of what Better Forms does, right? Now it's really, really low level, but we just did that up. And I think if I had to do this, even in another web, now in fairness, I, I'm very familiar with this software, but many of our developers are all familiar with it as well. And they could probably bang off something like this in almost the same amount of time. And I think you can probably do some very simple stuff like this faster than even using a, a, um, a web application, sorry, a form builder, right? But better forms is so much more than that because this is okay, but I really, maybe the locations, maybe it should come from, uh, it should come from the database, right? Because I don't have just any old location. I have some very specific ones and I want to tie this data in with something. So in that case, we can fetch data from FileMaker when this page first renders. Or maybe we want to send a link to them. We know that this field agent is out and they went out for the day and we're going to send them an email in the morning. Here's, uh, here's all of your, your, here's your stop. Here's the link to click on to report in for the stop. So they go back into the email, they click the link, they fill out the stuff, right? So maybe we want to do something like that as well. We can certainly do that. And here's an example of that. So a link would be something like, you have something like ID equals something along this line. I'm going to get rid of this little refresh thing. That's part of the, the live editing that I'm doing right now. doesn't really need to be there. So we'd have something like that, right? And we would want to fetch somebody's data and push it into here. Does that make sense? Maybe I want to pre-populate their name. And maybe I even know where their location is going to be. So I happen to have a table of people. It's got 1,000 thousand and one people. Guess who the number of thousand a month is. Um, and I'll grab a, just an ID at random. This is Ham Giannone. Copy. And I'm going to put their ID in here. And of course, it's not going to do anything, right? Because I didn't tell it to do anything yet. I just wanted to get that set up. Now, what we really want is we want this page. If you had to do this in FileMaker, you do something like, well, you probably go to the actual table. But let's say you do your work, your, your, your UI wasn't directly connected. You would have to find out the query and then on layout load, somehow do some kind of a find and find that record so that you're on that record to present the users the data. Almost the same in better forms. So let's jump to integration and let's click on this guy here, enable on form request. So I turn that on and I'm going to save that. Okay. And then what that's going to do is that's going to, when this page loads, it's going to call FileMaker, right? When we wanted to, when we designed better forms, we didn't want to be limited by having a lot of opinion in our code. That means, you know, if you have a product that goes to the general consumer, Calendly is a very simple app, it interfaces with your calendar and it books appointments. That's all it does. It's so simple, right? But super popular. It's, you don't need to have a ton of flexibility. It's got to connect to Outlook. It's got to connect to XYZ mail and so on. That's it. When you build a product for developers, you have to be hyper flexible because I guarantee someone will say, well, how, what if I needed to do this? Or what if I needed to do that? So what we did is we give you a lot of flexibility there. So there's a script here called on form request. And actually I have a couple of things in here already. And in here, actually, I want to get rid of this stuff. I'll just code it up. In here, I have access to this query parameter. That's a, called a query parameter, the question mark at the top. So I'm going to do set variable, and I'm going to call it ID person. That's the ID of the person that I'm sending this, I'm collecting the data from. And the data comes from the front end from better forms in a global variable called query. You can start to see a design pattern here. Right? These global variables are how we access stuff. So it comes in here, but it comes in here as a JSON array because it could be multiple ones or JSON object. So it's going to be JSON get element, JGE. From this, we get 
the thing. What did I call it? Zoom's in the way again. I called it ID right there. So I want to grab ID. And that's it. We've now we've got the ID. Here's a here's a trick that you guys can use in regular file maker development, and you'll never go back once you start doing things like this. Normally, you'd probably do something like go to layout, you know, perform find, handle the error, if get last error, do something else, do something else. And you have a, you have about eight ten lines of code in here on, on the on the bigger side, four lines on the smaller side. Here's how we sort of do it in, in better forms. Um, we just want to grab the data in this case. So we're not trying to go to the layout or anything. I just want to grab data and execute SQL is really awesome for that. So set variable and I'll call it dollar person. That's going to be a person object. And I'll show you what I mean by that person object. This is a, this is a design pattern. Again, this is not better forms. This is FileMaker. So you can use this for anything. Let's go into the um, design database here, manage database. And we have this field here called as JSON. And this is a really awesome technique. And what it is, it's a JSON set element and it's building up a JSON object of all of the fields of interest to the front end or interest to the use case that I want. And that's it. It's even including related fields. So it even has related addresses, which are a child of the, the, the person you know, home and cottage and such. So by doing that, I have one field that represents the entire record, okay? And if I add another field, like I need a middle name and I need it on the front end, I just have to go into here. I have to add that extra line and I'm done, okay? I discarded the memory changes. All right, so get person. And here's how we get that information out of there. We use a custom function. It's an execute SQL wrapper, but I can never get the formatting. I don't pay attention enough. So I always have to think about it. So instead we have a custom function. It's called get column. Get column. Oh, sorry. I should write it get column. There it is there. And it will return this field, which is the as JSON, when this field, which is the ID primary key, which should be called ID and not on a bunch of Zs and underscores and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much, right? Oh, man. High five on that one. ID person. I think that's what I called it here. ID person. So people, it'll return this here. It'll return this as JSON, which is really the whole record, when this equals that, okay? As JSON, it'll return it. All right, next, last line, set variable. We need to tell better forms about this. Remember how we, uh, um, how we were looking at that dollar dollar BF model, dollar dollar BF underscore model, not modal, but model. And that's the data that's coming in to better forms. That's what we're getting the stuff. Well, we want to supply it the data so we can inject data into this. So it's JSON set element and then into, into this, we're going to set it as a key called person because I think that's what we called it over here. Now you can see why I kind of, let me just do this quick. Let's just make sure person. Yeah. I'm going to set it in there and the value will be dollar person and it's a JSON object. Okay. So all of this stuff you can do is just, oops, what did I miss guys? Oh, you see it? First one bonus points. No. Okay. Too late. Well, I was wondering why the colon was there. Yeah, I, was, I thought that was a syntax decision. You know what? I'm, I'm the truth is I'm half blind. I can't even see the screen. I, I Charles, can you on see your form? You don't you don't have name last or name first. I, you know, I remember that one. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let me fix that one too. While we remember, that's a good catch on that one. So what Chris was that was Chris. I think what he was just saying it should say name last yeah. because my data coming from the front name end. First. Thank you. Seeing if you're still paying attention. <laughs> So you know what I use now? I, I, um, I, I, I use the accessibility thing and I zoom in. You can kind of see my monitor in behind when it goes and bleeds across. So half the time I'm coding, it's like zoomed in like this, but you can't tell. So I do that. And I, and I started doing that not because it's hard to see the screen, but because it reduce, takes all the distraction out of the screen. And I see just the code in front of me. And on average, when I do that, I make less mistakes. 
So that's something to experiment with. It's the uh, accessibility control and, and zoom up and down, just to zoom into the stuff that you're working on if you really need to concentrate. Well, but you can't you can't globally change the text size in the calculation uh, uh, stuff in the, in the scripts. So yeah, I don't know, but it's all over the app though. That's the thing, right? Like it's not just in that box. It's like every application, whatever I'm yeah. working on, it's just to add context. It's basically, it's like clearing the rest of your desktop and having one big document sitting there. It's just something to experiment with. Yeah, right. well, and yeah. My, my big one is, is I can't tell uh, an equal sign from a not equal sign. I have to blow it up. Or or use greater than equal, greater than less than, you know, to right. do to do a, a yeah, because the little slash, yeah, because yeah. you can't see it. So I think we're good here. ID person, okay. So that's is anybody questions on how that works? So we grab the ID from the query, we find the person, and we put tell put the person back into the object. We could do this in one line, but it wouldn't be as explicit and as yeah. uh, readable, right? So oh. literally one line of code, three at the most. We, we've done this to grab that. I fixed this. Have I saved that? And oh my gosh, look at that. So I saved it. The auto refresh did this. Um, when we saved this, you see it says, hey, here's Ham Giannone. And now Ham Giannone's data is filled out. Now, of course, if we wanted to fill out all of this stuff. We could do that as well. But that's how we fetch data from FileMaker. Let's grab another one. Like the 400th record really makes a difference. But just for some reason, it feels more random. And let's paste that in there. I hit enter and there's uh, Daphna, Daphna Lif. How's that for a handle, right? Um, there's Daphna Lif's uh, data here. And what we've done, we actually pulled more data from, from thing. We pulled a whole bunch of data in here. So if we wanted to show their Daphna's avatar and her photo and things like that, we could easily add that in there too, right? That's the gist of how we fetch data from FileMaker. Does that seem um, easy, hard? That's Welcome, great. honest feedback. Uh, how's your How's your documentation? Always, all documentation is always a work in progress. Okay, so, <laughs> all documentation doesn't matter what it is. But I mean, you've got some. You've got some. Let's just some, say some, I think it's better than Amazon's, like Google. Oh, Amazon. oh okay. <laughs> then <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Amazon's is pretty yeah, good too. That's a That's a good thing to say. Well, it, it's good, but it's just so much of it. Like, like I give up and I start going to some 12 year old on YouTube before I find it. Cause it's like, oh, I can't find yeah, this stuff. But at least but, they have everything. Yeah. True enough. So here's what we have. Here's what, here's what we have. Yeah, they, we have they, a, they've got the fire there. hose. The problem is how do you drink from that fire hose? <laughs> yes. My, yeah. So Here's what we have. We have a few different um, resources are, are in terms of things. First of all, our Slack community is, is, um, is, is pretty popular. We have a number of people in our, our Slack is about 300 and change or something like that. The developers, they're not all better forms users, but there's a lot of uh, community people and they're just FileMaker people and stuff that hang out as well. Super, super helpful, helpful, friendly people. You have a question and people are jumping in all the time. Most of it's uh, a lot of the times it's uh, myself and our staff um, that will try to get the most of it. We have our forum which is more for uh, more in-depth, longer-term questions, and it's a better, um, better has better data um, preservation, I guess you could say. So um, there's that as well, and it's free to join. Anybody can join. You can browse it, I think, without, uh, it's like forum.fmbetterforms, <clears throat> excuse me, .com. And then we have examples and demos. So let's say I wanted to add this location, but I really wanted to do some kind of Google Places Right, I was looking, thinking about that here. So here's an example of Google Places. And let me do, do this. Yeah. And I think I have a Google key. I'm not sure if I have a Google key programmed in here or not. So I have to check. And there we go. So start typing one, two, three, Main Street, Unionville. That's a town that's half an hour from me because it knows my ge uh, geolocation. And even though I didn't give Google permission to know my geolocation, Google knows a lot of stuff, right? So, um, <laughs> so that this is the data that's returned. Now, this is looking underneath the hood. This is just kind of like a like a lens to see underneath the hood, so we don't have to go into the dev tools. And you can see all the data that's there. So as soon as I type, you know, um, you know twenty uh, um, um, steals, uh, steals Avenue. There we go. 
um, all of this information is returned, even, even things like the uh, address and stuff like that. So we could easily use that for an example. And it's like, oh, I see how you use Google Places. I just need that element and I can pop it in. And um, in our case, we, just, we do need a, a Google uh, API key. Otherwise it runs out because that's how Google does their, their monetization. So that's, uh, we have a tons of examples that way. So that's another good start as well. And then uh, finally, we have a, a video library and we have about um, 30, 40 hours or so um, of videos here. And so if I'm looking for things like, if you're interested in that technique that I used with the as JSON for fetching that data, uh, that is, I think it's in here called uh, getting data from FileMaker or something like that. I think there's a three part. Yeah, here, preparing data for FileMaker. You'll have to listen to my voice, but uh, um, so there's a whole bunch of technique videos on how to do things as well. So you're not stranded. Um, in addition to that, we do a lot of onboarding and we'll pretty much whenever feasible, you can book time on our calendar almost anytime you want, but we'll try to jump on even right away if we can into a, a live call and, and help you resolve any problems or challenges or anything like that. So <clears throat> if you... If you're, if you're worried about support and things like that, I do encourage you to talk to other developers who use better forms. And um, I think we have a, a, a really, really excellent community. And, um, you know, you go on Facebook and you look and you, you, you maybe search better forms or something like that to see what people say, unbiased. You know, on Facebook, if they're going to nail you, they're going to stay. That's, that's the place to do it, right? And it's uh, pretty raving reviews. So I'm pretty confident to say that. Is that the uh, Canadian spelling of animations? Uh, that's the Charles spelling. Oh, I'm sorry. Clearly you've never received any of my texts or emails. I'm an engineer. I'm not a literary genius. I, you know, what happens is I just type and I don't know, I probably got uploaded and, and, uh, yeah, it's a Canadian spelling. I mean, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what you should have said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so those are, um, those are a number of our, um, uh, resources as well. And then our documentation, I missed that one here. This is a little bit more geared towards technical things like, um, I'm really interested in how that uh, um, um, modal worked. And I need to know if there's another setting so I can't, the user can't dismiss it. I want the modal to show and that's it. They're done. They're done the workflow. They have to close the app. So I would, you know, look for those kinds of things in here. I could search for, you know, various actions and, you know, find, find the, um, the docs, the docs on those things and, you know, a different additional keys that you would normally not use and right. feature those kinds of things. It's not something I would memorize, but I would definitely leave through at least once after I get started. I got started, you know, I like here as a thing about cookies. Well, maybe I need to change the set different names or the days or whatever I want. So there's a whole, some information there, or I want to know something about uh, messaging. Um, one of the apps used real-time messaging, which is a new feature. So there's not a lot of examples, but there, we do have that. We do come up with the docs right away for new features and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Nice. That is the, uh, that's the gist of things. I don't know how we're doing for uh, time and all of that stuff. Well, we, we, we still have some time. Uh, perhaps we should open it up to questions. I do have some questions. Yeah, man. Uh, very curious. Let me start my video here. Uh, so everything happens uh, server side. Is that correct? Um, only the things that you want to happen server side. Okay. Meaning if I don't want to include FileMaker, we've built apps that have no FileMaker in them. Okay, and, that was one of my questions. Yeah. But if you are using FileMaker, are there certain technologies that you have to turn on on the server or? Um, no, yes, well, yes and no. You can use, if BetterForms can connect with the data API or the XML gateway. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some limitations there in terms of uh, what OS you're operating on and so on, based on what FileMaker uh, makes available. Um, aside from that, enable the web. So if, if, you're, if your web director is working, Better, mm -hmm. forms will, better forms will work as well okay. uh, for the most part. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the data API. And, you know, I, I did see a, a message come down from Claris a little bit mm -hmm. about uh, circumventing licensing issues recently uh, by utilizing certain web technologies. Yeah. Uh, I'm just sort of curious how that impacts you. Um, the kind of the way I'm looking at what you're doing is you've got a real separation between the forms and FileMaker. Uh, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious whether that's a concern. Yeah, so FileMaker's concern is people who have an app that uses FileMaker as a development tool and then 
ditches FileMaker and the app runs on its own. Mm -hmm. Because then they've used all of their engineering and they've gotten nothing out of it other than maybe a developer license, which is like a hundred bucks. So right. that's not really fair to them. And I totally agree with that hundred um, percent. It also, they also went out and clarified that. I think it was Rick Coleman who came out later on and, and made it very, very clear that it is not about people who are extending functionality. It's about replacing functionality in FileMaker. Okay. Better forms, and I said this right from the top, better forms doesn't replace FileMaker. Right, it extends it, and there's a very, very, and in the audience that people use our product for are not the regular file filemaker clientele. To my knowledge, I don't think I know of any developer who's downsized their licensing because of using better forms. That's not that's not its sweet spot. But they don't have to buy as many concurrent licenses. They wouldn't buy as many concurrent. We have a a, a user who reports. Um, Jesse, and he's in one of our, he was, uh, we interviewed him on one of our Friday lives, which we're having one this week, if you want to learn more about uh, some web stuff. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a meetup around this time as well, a little bit earlier. And uh, Jesse has a vertical and he's got three to 5,000 users. And his users are, when you go to the, uh, like a, um, I see them at Costco, but if you have a, a go to an event, sporting event, and there's somebody giving Jägermeister shots or something out, um, you know, usually a pretty good looking person kind of thing, handing stuff out and chatting about chatting up about their product. They go on to his app and he sells his app to the marketing companies, but they use his software. They register for the event. They find out where they have to go, the times, what clothes they should wear, everything, sign off uh, the contract because it's a contract. And they're called contractors and um, appear at this venue. It's not practical. Like, you know, on a Friday night, he'll have literally thousands of users. It's not practical for him to, to, to do that with native FileMaker. But his clients who are using the product, the main product, the, the main core of the product and working in daily every day, they all have file, regular FileMaker licenses. So that's not something he would have built native in FileMaker in the first place. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned um, multi-tenancy, and I and I'm thinking that that model is actually existing at the better forms level, not the filemaker level. No, it's both, because you have to separate your data in some fashion, right? So let's say, for example, <clears throat> these these users all belong to different organizations. I still have a people table, but somewhere in my people table, I'll have some kind of field like. ID organization, something like that. And that would associate with them to the top. So now instead of me finding all the people that are in the entire database, a thousand people, I find them by the ID of the organization. So it happens at the find level for the most part. Okay. You have to do well, one other you, thing as well. Pardon me? So you're not, you're not talking, you're not talking about having uh, a single server supporting Different, there's different, well, there's different scenarios, right? So um, um, there's different, um, 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 images, images. There's different scenarios on how you do multi-tenant software. There's a good one that I'd like to use if I can find it. This is a bigger here. So yeah, this will do. So you can sort of see, let me see if I can. I can't really blow this up too much, but try to make the best here. There, you can sort of see it here. Right? This is, actually, these are, these are not quite, imagine this is in three boxes. These are three separate standalone, 100% standalone systems. How 99% of FileMaker developers build multi-tenant solutions. They're not multi-tenant, they're multi-file solutions, right? Right. Then uh, this is not the greatest here, but this is multiple front, single front end. It should be single front end, multiple back ends. Let me see if I can find a better picture. Um, and then finally, the the holy grail is single front end, single back end. And that's how every app outside of, well, not every app. I won't be that uh, blunt in saying, but most of the multi, most of the apps that you use that are cloud based work is they have a single, 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 single front end, single back end. I don't know where just, they, you know, just all your all your finds are based on the organization. Yeah, you have to have right. the organization in every that. find. Yeah, and that's a simple way to control it because then it's hard scripted. It's not about oh, I forgot to lock uh, go to related records and suddenly I'm on the next other person's record. 
or yeah. I forgot to lock this menu command down, or I, I didn't handle this one scenario. When you're explicitly coding something, it's very easy to do a code audit on that and say, hey, am I checking for the tendency on, on, on the top of the script? Am I also checking on the opposite happens in reverse too, right? When you go to write a record, you have to make sure that that data coming in is owned by the person who we know they have, who's authenticated. They can't spoof the authentication, but you can spoof the data. Meaning I can go to my banking website um, and I can right click on it and I can inspect all the code. I can see all the data there. But if I say, you know, send some fault, faulty data going back to the banking website that says suddenly Charles has a million dollars in this account, the, their software just looks at it and says, yeah, there's, that's wrong. Probably flags, okay. I would imagine as well. But that's not multi-tenancy as FileMaker views multi-tenancy as a, as a license violation. Uh, Sorry, say FileMaker, that again. Are we talking about license or are we talking design patterns? There's a difference there. That's right. That's right. So it just that was just a trigger for me because I used to host multi-tenant. Oh, oh yeah. Those are two. No, when, when I say tenant, I'm not referring to one pizza delivery app and one palm oil manufacturing track. Right. Right. I'm talking I, about one pizza delivery app selling that pizza delivery app to various pizza houses. Right. You're just pizza. you're just controlling you're just controlling who sees what. Correct. Yeah, that's what okay. I mean by multi-tenant. A single application, yeah. but the tenants within that application, not within okay. the FileMaker server environment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that just kind of got my my little antennas up. <laughs> that yeah. term it's a trigger and there are lots of people with uh uh, uh you know verticals and it's not a new thing to file maker there's tons right. of old verticals that have been around for you know we just co did a quote uh because somebody was looking to convert and there's like 20 years old their application mm -hmm. right? and better forms is great for that because you don't have to touch the ui in better for in file maker you literally have to make very subtle changes to the tables in other words i added a json key that was it for the mm -hmm. data that i needed only for the data that i'm, I'm going to be pulling and then a separate set of scripts and scripts are cheap. So it's really easy to retrofit an existing app and turn it into a, 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 a web app and even as a vertical for that, for that sense. Okay. But it doesn't Thank have to you. be like that too. You know, you can, you can, as a developer, you can go to your client and say, Hey, listen, we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we're dabbling in this new technology and we can actually produce a web portal for you. Um, that will give this extra functionality and uh, we can develop it at a really, really reduced rate. And it will be, you know, $120 a month and charge them a monthly subscription for that. And when you do that, suddenly you have, you've turned your services from per hour into renewable revenue, right? Recurring revenue. You're basically selling your services as software as a service. Pardon me? That's good. Yeah, it's a great idea. And we started to see more developers and you can do this with your FileMaker stuff too. Like it's not, it's not a better forms thing. Um, and uh, with our group in, in uh, SOFA in Toronto, it's called SOFA. Um, three developers now, right? I gave a talk about this at our group and three developers have certainly switched their, their design. And it's like, why didn't I, did not, why was I not doing this before? Because when it's recurring, you know, every year you're getting a higher percentage of return on investment because you're not doing the development work anymore. So it's just as an experiment. Next time you give a quote, say, you know, here's, here's phase one, phase one B and one A, and here's the price. And here's an option C and it's going to be recurring and we're going to lower the ratio and you figure out how many hours, if it's a hundred hour project, maybe you'll, you know, you'll break even after the first year or something, whatever you ratio you want, throw it on there as a quote, you got nothing to lose. And if they go for it, if it's reasonably balanced, they'll, you know, a percentage of them will go for it. And now suddenly you got recurring revenue. We're seeing that with, with uh, better forms as well. So speaking of licensing, let's jump to that. Any other questions guys so far? That was going to be mine. All right. It's pretty expensive. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I don't think it's, I think it's super reasonable to be honest with you. Okay. If I can find the price, we don't put prices on our website. You know, why don't you have prices on a website? Because they don't understand what the product is until you really see what it does. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, because you make an armchair decision and 
you don't understand what value you're getting out of it. You're comparing it to something like job form or something for seven bucks a month or whatever, you can get a minimal entry level. So we have uh, three different packages, basically citizen developer plan. It's a great getting started. It gives you 20 pages of development. That's the, the metric that we use. Um, virtually any use case doesn't have any restriction on users or anything like that. Uh, you can have, I think a single developer working in your environment, better forms as the editor. It's a multi-tenant application. Incidentally, guys, this editor that I'm using in better forms here, um, this thing here that, you know, where I pick the apps and the environments and all stuff, that's a better forms app. It's built out of better forms, right? Our app is, our product is built out of our own product, if that makes sense. It was you, back eat, end. you eat your own dog food. We 100% eat our own dog food daily. What's the yeah. back end? The back end? The back end is, what do you think? FileMaker? File maker. Okay, yeah. good. I mean, that's not what operates the low-level code. Right? We have a whole infrastructure and data centers and things like that. But fundamentally, this application, which is the app that edits your code, is a better forms, is a FileMaker app and it's a better forms app. So this has this, we do all the editing, all of this stuff, all of these kinds of things. That's all just that's all powered by FileMaker Live. Right. We have multi-tenants, we have an average. Um, it works out every every day, it's a little bit different, but we usually have between 20 and 40 or so developers in our system at any time. And that's just one server? Yeah, that's all you need. Very minimal. It's like 7% or something CPU, right? Because most of the time, what are you doing? You're typing, right? You're not interacting with a database. Better Forms doesn't use any resources on your computer until you're interacting with it. And then it's only for that small dwell time, that small time that the script is running. So it's a it's a basically a browser app with a FileMaker backend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's another piece of software in between, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, basically our citizen developer plan gives you unlimited users and it's uh, $5.99 per year, which is about uh, 50 bucks a month or so. So it's pretty competitively priced to um, like, you know, 35 bucks or something like that. You would pay for, pay for a dumb form generating app. So one, one domain. So that's like a, an in-house developer, say. Yep. Yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, a lot of times that's all you need. You can have um, the one custom domain. You can have uh, um, more FM better forms domains. But you notice like this one here or this app that I used before um, that was a city inspection permit that had a custom domain. It wasn't an FM better forms one. Okay. Some of the other ones were staging servers. So I used, uh, I, I, I wasn't uh, on the production domain. <clears throat> okay. So that's the first option. Then we have our, um, then we have our, um, um, pro plan and the pro plan basically gives you unlimited, unlimited these, these are both unlimited users, but it gives you unlimited pages that you can develop with. So you're not, you're not restricted in anything. We do have one caveat is you cannot in this plan, you can build it, you can use it for various clients, but you cannot have any of those clients have a vertical, which falls into this plan. So this one's 1,750 per year. And, um, and then finally, our vertical plan, it actually ha works out to the same price, but the, um, the difference is that with the vertical, you can only have a single, uh, single use case, one single scoped uh, application. So in other words, if you're building an app that uses for palm oil refinery tracking, there's really two apps there, but it's really only a single license, right? In other words, if this thing is heavily monetized, or if it's the primary access for fetching money into your company, then you only get one of them. Yeah. Otherwise, if it's ancillary to the functionality of the business, then the pro developer plan, you can build as much as you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, the two clients I'm thinking of, one is a vertical app and one is, is an in-house app. So, it would be one one pro and one vertical for my two for those two clients. And yeah, and what you can do is, is you know you start off you can start off here and then later on they can they can um, um, they can uh, update their their license. So you can prototype it in the citizen developer and then uh, and then when it goes live, stick it in the yeah. vertical license. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of people that do that. Okay, right. We have we have. Uh, um, one of the developers, he's got three verticals now or two or three, I think it's three. And he just, he developed the, the proof of concept in, in, in here and then he spun it off and purchased an extra license when he went live. 
right? We're pretty, pretty fair that way. So the difference, there's no difference in the app. It's just the difference in the licensing and what they're allowed to use it for. A couple small differences um, in terms of features for the most part. It's okay. how much you can build. And some of the new features, they're limited in the lower plans. You can only have, if you have a dev house, you're going to have to be, you can only have one developer um, logged in. But in this case here, um, me as I'm, uh, I'm using the Delft's engineering um, account. Uh, let me go to my account page. I have seven users, right? This is all of our team. So we have seven users that are, um, that are using our app uh um licensed so if you have a bunch of dev developers then you need a pro plan basically right. you want to have more than one person log in all right to build stuff right, and, then the, and then yeah. the page limit and the page limit and actually there's a couple little things like this new feature oauth um that is a um um oauth is a uh, uh a premium Premium feature, and that's only available in the pro plan. That won't be available in, in the developer plan. Okay. Oh, sorry, that's not it here. This this thing here, it's really easy to use. It's literally put one button on, drag and drop a button on there, and and you have to configure the the backend service. This one's using Auth zero, but even though it's Auth zero as the intermediate uh, identity provider, and then it's really going to to get GitHub because it's a tool for developers. So they're going to need a GitHub account because there's an integration with uh, GitHub as well. Oh, so you could decide to, who you're going to integrate with. Yeah, yeah. If you use uh, Auth Zero, I think you get like seven thousand users for free, the first seven thousand, and then it's only like twenty-seven bucks or something. I know Oak does a lot more expensive, but um, but it's pretty pretty reasonable. So if you want to develop some kind of single sign-on with with better forms and with your uh, um, FileMaker and all that stuff, you can totally do that now. So I'll just, I'll chime in. So we've been using well, almost three years now. We've had our first clients started using better forms about three years ago. And Mike, to your question, ours were replacements for CWP with the PHP backend. Um, and we have now four clients using it and we have five and six coming online here in the coming months. And it's been really good for me. Who's not a web guy. Steve Winter does all our web stuff, who's phenomenal. And he always did everything with PHP. We have now done stuff with Steve in better form, where he does the super highly technical web stuff. And then I can come in and change it as needed and modify things. We have some clients that we don't use Steve that I'm able to do stuff just on my own with basic better forms. And I have very limited web coding abilities and I've learned as we've gone on in the years, but it's been really, powerful for us to be able to put clients on web platforms that would normally need in PHP backends. Not, not web direct things wouldn't work like public registration for Under Armour events that you just couldn't do it in web direct. And for us, it was more figuring out a solution to handle what you would typically have used CWP for. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, we, and it's interesting of uh, the design pattern that you guys use, where one person primarily works in the front end, the other person, you know, ninety five percent works on the back end. We do that same design pattern when we build our stuff now. So we have one person working on the front end, like the whole process is three people: it's the UX guy or girl person. Um, there's the um, front end person and the back end person. Sometimes the front end and back end person is the same with smaller apps, but with bigger apps, there's a lot more. FileMaker stuff that they have to do. So we usually split that off. And uh, that works really, really well, what we find, because it's a separation of concerns as far as work, as far as yeah. development goes. Yeah, it's been phenomenal for us. Basically, what Charles showed earlier, I get, I create the scripts for retrieving data. Steve builds the page, however, whatever needs to be on the page. And then he says, I'm done. And then I build the FileMaker stuff for consuming the data. And we literally just have receive and um, consume data and or collect and receive data scripts that say, hey, I'm collecting this, fo this form, I'm receiving this form, and it's worked great. I think that's a real benefit to be able to uh, 
slice up the uh, uh, the development like that. Yeah, it is. It's clean too. A very yeah. clean. It's a very clean, clear responsibility uh, difference. So um, it's a very real separation model type approach. Yeah. yeah it's one node nice. about um, one node about Auth zero. Uh, Auth zero is now part of Octa, and I believe on the thirteenth or fourteenth of October. They are having a showcase uh, online to um, demonstrate uh, the various integrations of the products and how they can be used. Check the uh, Okta website. Hmm. Yeah, I think the pricing models are quite a bit different, though. So it should be interesting to see what Auth0 Auth does. Now, it doesn't mean you have to use Auth0. In fact, if you want to use uh, those kinds of services, let me see which I'm in the demo app again. If I want to use those kinds of services, it's not too hard uh, app settings. All this all better forms, right? Um, authentication, enable third-party authentication, select your provider, Auth0, Google. And um, these are mostly compatible. It's literally, you just paste the information in there, client ID, client secret, subdomain. Um, some, some services require a special, special a scope JSON object in here, I think. And uh, that's pretty much it. You hit save and um, you add a button onto your page and we take care of everything else. All the heavy, all the, all the, all the intermingling is, is uh, taken care of. And that means you can also use third-party services like, uh, or in open source ones, identity provider uh, management, things like Key Cloak and stuff like that too. Cloak is uh, very good, particularly if you're going to be using um, uh, the new Linux version. Um, but um, you know, the the o OAuth is one of the providers that is uh, set to work with FileMaker Cloud as well. So uh, uh, just um, you know, look around, see what uh, happens. If you have questions about that, post them to. Uh, either FM forums or uh, the uh, Claris community, and we'll try to get you the information. Yeah. Um, and, you, and the nice thing is you quite often, it just works out that the users who are using the better forms app don't necessarily have to be in the same realm as the users who are using the FileMaker app, meaning they don't necessarily have to have parity access. They can be a separate group most of the time. Like they may be all your suppliers and uh, um, uh, or independent staffing or something like that. There's not usually an employee that's working inside FileMaker and inside uh, a Better Farms app. It's usually a separate group of people, so they don't. Oh, you don't always have to be um, having that same management or equality there, which makes life a little bit easier. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole concept behind. Uh... Uh, providers versus brokers, so uh, that's good. All right, that's the way our licensing works. We also do consulting as well. Um, we can consult on any level. We can do high level. Some people we do really high level architecture and say, hey, you know, this is how we think you should um, structure your app because you'll run into less problems from our experience to turnkey type solutions. This app here what was it uh, the demeter um this app is do, 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 do. um we uh we built this one end to end our, our staff did so um it's a very uh it's a little bit more polished and things like that um and it, it has the ability for the users to go in. they can add users we've added some things like you know little animations and stuff like that so it's you know it's a nice nice you nice to use app feels nice it works works uh quite well um and so on so um but we don't have to do that we can consult on a very high level or just use our uh, free onboarding and training and uh and run with it run with the app from there that's what most people do You guys want to see a sneak peek of a new product? Absolutely. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody do web development? Uh, sorry, web viewer development. It's currently clear. Okay. Not Siri. Sorry. Sky starting in the afternoon. Uh, not Siri. Temperatures are heading down from yeah. to 22 tonight. Okay. <laughs> and then if you go and tell Siri to be quiet, it's just like, 
that's like a whole other conversation. That's like, that's why I'm single. Okay. Uh, um, what is it called? This thing is uh, better. I always forget the domain of this. Okay. So let's pretend we have a, um, let me just use, I'm just going to use this for FileMaker-ish things. Hopefully there's no problems here. I'll just show you really, really quick. Okay. So I got a FileMaker application here. Let's pretend that it's my demo file. It has nothing to do with, with what we were talking about here. This is totally separate. One of the hard hardships I, I see developers struggling with is trying to, not only the tooling, you know, I've seen even seminars, webinars on tooling, how to set up tooling for FileMaker development and all this kind of stuff. And I think it's really hard um, for web viewer, but I really, my goal is to pop a web viewer on here. Which one's a web viewer? That one there. And I want to, I want to build some kind of widget to interact with FileMaker, right? Um, so that's really my goal. So along comes, uh, um, this is going to be our sort of, uh, um, our, um, this is really just very, 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 very alpha um, application. I've spent an entire 21 hours of developing this so far. Okay, that's it. So, um, and it's uh, powered by better forms as well. And basically you log in. And so the idea is I wanna build something here and I wanna build something in this web viewer. So I'm gonna go into my projects and I have a bunch of different projects and we'd like to make this as a give back to the community. So it'd be free for like 90% of the people. Um, and I want to learn about, uh, let's see, doo -doo -doo. I want to learn about uh, Tailwind uh, CSS. We're, having a, we're actually having a webinar on it on this Friday about uh, how to design and style stuff like this. It's not about just better forms. It's going to be about stuff using this, this uh, library in general. And uh, so I entered this, this lessons here, which is kind of like a project. I have one called Tailwind Basics, I think. Let me have a look. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do this, okay. All right, so if you follow along, I've pasted, this is for development and how I can develop stuff in FileMaker. All right. And this says, hello world right here, hello. Uh, Kaboom. All right. Now, if you've missed it, what's happening here is this is doing a live development in a web viewer live in FileMaker. All right. So that means I'm using this app. I can save this. Um, this is connected to this thing here. So if I change that to this, you know, put something like here. Right, boom, it's live. This data is going, getting injected into that, into that there. So what this means is no more tooling, no more all that, excuse my language, crap that you have to go through and jump through. And that crap is how I make a living because that's what I'm really good at doing, right? I use that stuff all the time, but it's way too hard as a, as a FileMaker developer when we're dealing with not code head, people, but we're dealing with the clients, we're dealing with billing, we're dealing with all the other stuff that's involved with business to, to endeavor into that technology to take advantage of it. So what we, we, we'd like to do is be able to make that a lot easier for you. Um, so here is basically a very simple web page, right? It's got a header, it's got a link tag to a, a CSS library. And then I'm just using that library to format this stuff here. Maybe I want to put a hover on there or something that looks like it looks like it has a hover on there and so on. And I want to change things, things. We can experiment, we can develop, we can save our code, we can commit it to GitHub when we're done. Not proprietary format. It's in a format that's directly consumable or ingestible by a FileMaker file and into a web viewer using one of a few different techniques uh, of injecting code into uh, how we're gonna you know, put your source code in there depending on the type of app and how big it is. And, um, this app, our goal here is to have a number of lessons so you can learn about these kinds of things and examples. And later on, you can invite collaborators. So I'm working on the UI. This our UI guy has not touched this at all. So this is just me. So I can invite a collaborator. Do I want them to be an admin, a collaborator, or a viewer? And when I invite that person, like, a, for example, I say, hey, Chris, you want to check out my thing? He says, yeah, I invite him as a viewer. And he says, Charles, I have some suggestions. Okay, let me, let me change you. I can change you into a collaborator, change your role. And now he can edit on the same thing, the same code. One of the biggest things in FileMaker is we can't easily collaborate. 
and the re way the rest of the world is really accelerating, and to be frank, accelerating way faster than we are, is because they can collaborate. So it's exponential, right? They have open source libraries that are just gone crazy in terms of flexibility and powerfulness, um, just because you have this building upon all these shoulders of all these other people. And we're going to be able to do that with a, with a web viewer stuff too. And the reason this is not sort of um, um, add on, add on, yeah, add on centric at all is because I think add ons are going to be linear in the sense of, okay, we've got another one, we've got another one. But I would like to see the growth, the code that goes into those add ons, which is probably going to be mostly JavaScript in the future. I'd like to see that grow exponentially. So we have uh, different projects and things like that in here. Um, here's one for um, if I want to learn about Vue.js. Vue.js is a react reactivity framework. And here's a counter. And let me just open this up. I can open, oh, by the way, we'll be able to pop this out of here and pop it into here. And that means we can actually edit and diagnose and, and uh, troubleshoot in the browser and everything like that. And here's a very, very simple counter and an example of how it works. And I click me and it counts counts away, right? So we have this functionality here running in separate as a separate web app. Nothing to do with better forms. Remember, better forms is only the mechanism that the, this app here was built on. This is a totally separate product, but it's built out of our product as well. And, um, and if you can believe it or not, we're getting all this functionality, almost all natively. There's 12 lines of JavaScript that's outside of the regular better forms actions and stuff to make this work which is pretty cool. I think it's, uh, it, it's uh, taking advantage of a number of new features in our, in our uh, platform. So that's something uh, that's on the horizon. Um, it might make it into to be a real product or not. It might not. But if you want to play around with it, um, we don't have, it's constantly in development right now, but all you need to sign up is a GitHub account. There is no sign up. You literally just click login and it creates an account for you and it takes care of you. There's no, there is no sign up process. There's no logging in kind of process other than, other than that. And uh, you'll have your own sandboxed place. As we add features and things like that, we'll, uh, we'll announce them and we'll push them out uh, as we develop it. But if uh, it's something you want to play with, you're welcome to do that. Oops. So that's well, it. That's, that's a nice approach to uh, an MVP. Um, people can start using, anybody can start using. It's nice. Yeah. See, half the battle working with web viewer and stuff is the opaqueness of the code. Oh yeah, you meet, that's what I was thinking when you, when you were doing that, you, you immediately see when you have a syntax error. Yeah, you, you know exactly what's going on, right? Yeah. And later on, we're gonna add some injection so that when FileMaker is talking to this web viewer, we will log it over here. Hmm. So that means you don't have, you can see what's going on. You can see, oh, wow, I'm not giving, I'm giving it an array, it wants an object. I'm giving it name first and it wants just name, that kind of stuff. You can solve those problems without digging in too deep, right? that will be really, really easy to do that. You'll be able to figure out things because people will help to contribute, hopefully, um, into things like lessons. I just made these as projects, but you might have a project called the Acme Corp. And Acme Corp might have two web viewers. One's a chart and one's a data table, right? So you would go into the community side and you would search for a data table. And um, got some avatars broken. Um, you would search for a data table and say, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, I see uh, John, John worked on this. You know, he's part of my group or whatever. But let me just hit copy. And now I can work on it myself. It's, I forked, forked whatever he had or she had. And... I can commit it to my own repository, my own GitHub, if I want. I can keep the code in here too, but, but we don't want to, um, we're not going to track the versions. We'll only keep one version of code. The rest of it will be taken care of by Git. You won't have to worry about managing GitHub. You won't have to learn, learn any GitHub commands and all of that stuff because we'll take care of that for you. Just hit save and hit commit. So this stuff is all at GitHub. This, uh, this, isn't, this isn't here, but all of the code that people choose to share will be, yes. Oh, okay. That's going to be a feature of this. Okay. I don't know if this one's done yet. Let's see if this is, uh, so, you know, these things like simple drag to sort. What is that? Let me just see what this is. The reason this is not updating is because these are different projects. This is only bound to that one project here. So let me do this. 
just do this. Oh yeah. So here's an example. You know, I, I came up came up with a module. Some of you guys may even use it. It's an old drag sort thing. And then somebody just uh, pinged me the other day, and this is like ten years old, and they're asking for support for it. And unfortunately, there's there's not the right way to do it anymore. I also don't have you know I can't take my Model T to my car, my my mechanic either. So it's older, right? So we need to adjust this. Um, so here's an example of a uh, drag sort. Uh, just I just whipped this up really quick, and as an example, oops. And um, it uses uh, it uses a couple libraries, and then you know maybe we could put some documentation. Now people could use this, right? And they don't have to add a whole bunch of heavy stuff. They'll literally add a, a tag in here into their into their FileMaker and just start using it, right? It would make it really easy. It's not as wrapped. It's not won't be as wrapped as a as an add-on, which has a lot of extra tooling to. Um, and environmental stuff to make it work really smooth for the interface. This is not going to be for real, real beginner rookie developers. It'll be for intermediate and upward developers. But that's the idea. So I don't know if that's something that you guys would use, but uh, people who oh. don't mind getting their their hands dirty with real code. Well, it's not just that. It's people like when I first started developing, or coding, or whatever we would call it, I copied and pasted. All right. There wasn't, wasn't wasn't much to Google, so I literally typed stuff out of books. I went. I remember going into the bookstore and literally sitting in the bookstore because I couldn't afford the twenty thirty dollars for a book at the time, and I'm reading through the whole thing, right, making notes sometimes because they don't have <laughs> pop and learning that way. And but the copying and pasting is really really powerful. And now today is you know we're in the information age. We don't need to learn everything. We just need to know what kind of stuff I change. Like if I had to tell you on this thing here, it's uh, well, this one's not a good example. It says element name. If I had to say, you, um, maybe it's a, I don't know where are the elements right here. Here they are here, element name. And I'd said, okay, I, I, want, I want bird changed to snake. Well, you can easily do that. And I want you to add two other animals. Well, then you know how to, you could easily do that as well, right? And that's most of what we do. All right, that's we don't need to reinvent the wheel anymore. So I think we should have tools that to facilitate that, facilitate full flexibility, but not reinventing the wheel. That looks great. Any uh, somebody else speak up? Uh, questions, uh, comments, gripes, well wishes. Anybody else? Jokes, insults. Uh, Charles, we use your system, and I got to say, it's worked out great. Thank you very much for all your help. Oh, thank you. Who's sorry? I don't have my uh, my. It's Alan. Alan. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that was a great project, right? Because um, can I talk about your project just a little bit, Alan? Sure. So Alan um, talked to us on a Saturday afternoon. Sunday. Sunday. Well, you, okay. You, <laughs> you started support on a Sunday. That shows you what type oh. of service you guys did. So, yeah, but well, you originally contacted us the evening or the afternoon before. Yeah. And you said, I got to get this thing up and running by Wednesday. And I said, no, no worries. I said, we'll get you. We'll got you. Right. Sunday, we did our onboarding. Monday had almost an MVP. Couple cleared a couple of things on the next two sessions. And then it was, I think, live on maybe that Wednesday. I think it was something like that. Yeah. Right. It was a very simple app. It wasn't much more complicated but it's more polished than what we built today, right? But it's a good example of, of how you can build something that's scalable and just, and now you can go back and retool it and do whatever you need from there. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, FYI, that was used for the national finals for the US uh, Olympics fencing. Oh, is that right? Yep. Cool. There's some pretty cool use cases. You start hearing about some of the stuff that people build. And I guess FileMaker has the same thing, right? Even more because they hear about all these amazing apps that people build. And we see them previewed at things like uh, DevCon where they're showing some eye doctor in South America or something. And he's got this whole app and this whole system. And it's like, wow, look at the stuff you built. Yeah. We have this one, uh, one uh, a developer. And he took our system and he built a vertical. And it sells... Uh, um, grave monuments. He specializes in that, their, his company. And uh, the software, you can pick the thing and you can pick the typeface and you can, you can pick the stone. And, and, and it's like, wow, this is really cool. Like, I hope I never have to use it, but it's really, really cool. <laughs> so, but it was pretty, so it's really, really rewarding that way. Anyhow. Yeah. Well, guys. Uh, that, that's what's great about DevCon is, is I mean, not not even the the 
the sessions, but just chatting with somebody at dinner. Oh, yeah. what do you do? And oh, well, my app um, manages all the video deliveries for all the theaters in the, in the country. You know, all the all the video cassettes for the movies that go out to all the theaters in the country. That's all done in FileMaker. And and I'm like, whoa! You hear all kinds of stuff that's uh, that you would have never thought of that FileMaker is involved in. So we're actually in the process of redoing our marketing site. Um, so this is our old page and this was scratch coded uh, from some web template and this is built in better forms. So you just built like, your entire website in better forms. Yeah, why not? Dog food, right? These will be dynamically generated because um, so they come from software, from data, but the whole thing's responsive and everything like that. But yeah, so we're going to have our marketing website in there. And it also forces us to solve some, some challenging problems. Um, Better forms is dynamically generated, which generally means most dynamically single page web apps are not SEO to SEO. Google's getting better with SEO for this kind of stuff, but they don't, it, it takes resources on their side to, um, to generate a page that's dynamically generated. It takes time because they got to download stuff and render it and all this kind of stuff. Um, but there are some techniques that, that you can use, and we're going to be incorporating those in our, in our framework for that purpose. All right. And that's another benefit because we do use our product 100%. So it, it's not like, you know, we're making FileMaker, but at the same time, we're using a different database internally. It's not like that. But at any rate, um, if you're interested, uh, folks, in, in, in learning more, uh, there's a, a spot where you can book some time on our calendar somewhere in here. There it is, schedule a demo. Um, and we'll look at what your use case is and, and even maybe build something up if you want. So it's pretty fun. Okay, I'm there. I got a couple I want to talk to you about. Super. Does anybody else have any questions? Wow. Yeah, I know. Huh? It's, it's, <laughs> it's like... I'm gonna go home. They're 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 in, they're all in awe. They're speechless. Oh I know. I'm gonna sleep now. It's like, oh my gosh, I so like what they nobody asked any questions. No. I won't be in denial thinking they did such a great job. Oh no, that's a, no, it was amazing. So I, had, I hadn't seen that before. Alan was telling me about it, but I hadn't seen it before. And uh I can think of all kinds of uses for it. No. You know what? Uh, um there's some really neat things. There's some little things and there's some like dynamic registration stuff. That's pretty popular summer camps and schools, but the uh, monetization payment gateways, like, you know, to add a, to add a payment gateway into, um, um, to, to here, if I wanted to, you know, add some Stripe or something like that into this application here, it's really, really, it's like crazy easy. Um, Oh, this is the wrong page, I think. Yeah, this is the wrong page. Job applications. Um, if I use Stripe, there's different ways. Of, there's different different ones, but let's use Stripe. And I am going to add it right in here. It's going to be two buttons, but that should be okay. All right. Now we got two buttons here. So we would normally hide this button. So we fill all of this out. We click Buy Now. And there's Stripe's payment pay portal. So I put something in here and I'll just use a test card. I think that's okay. I think any, any date in the future, pay $1. Stripe processes that. Oh, it says that's wrong. 23, 23 process. And Stripe process that. Well, they, Stripe captures the card, okay? And what you get back as a developer is you get back this, you get back a token. This time is a time limited token. So it lasts uh, about 15 minutes or something like that. Um, you would now pass that to FileMaker. FileMaker would use your private or your secret key and complete the transaction. So it's one insert from URL and you've got a payment gateway. And so that's a really, really common use case of, of fetching that. Mm. I want that. Sorry, it's turning into a <laughs> my own personal meeting. Sorry. Hey, please, anybody else uh, questions or, or comments? 
so everybody's uh, muted. So if you're trying to talk and you're wondering why nobody's answering. <coughs> okay, well, um, everybody knows how to get a hold of him, uh, knows, the, knows where his website is. So uh, feel free to, to follow up uh, afterwards if you've got something uh, specific you want to talk about with uh, Charles. And I know I will be. Um, so thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Charles. And thank uh, you. Terrific presentation. And um, uh, we'll see you again. Maybe uh, you can you can uh, demo your uh, your that 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 development environment for the for the web viewer. Yeah, um, yeah. Sounds really really cool. Uh, so uh, when you've got that, uh, uh, it'll be a game changer. Pr so. Pretty mature. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have you back to to demo that back. for us. Um, so, and don't give up on that. I mean, that's, you know, you said that, you know, if it may turn into a product, make sure it turns into a product because <laughs> that's cool. It's, it comes down to resources, right? I, well, I yeah, I understand. So, into it. so, well, so what, uh, so go ahead and charge for it, you know, go ahead yeah. and charge, you know, a nominal fee, something to, yeah. to help, you know, uh, because, you know, certainly something that powerful, you know, if, if somebody's got to pay, you know, 20 bucks a year to be able to use that, it would would be or fifty dollars or you know I mean there's so many um, so many ways to justify uh, paying for something and the amount of time it saves you the amount of frustration it saves you um, you know people would people would be willing to pay something for that uh, I'm sure so uh, don't think you have to make it free so so okay anyway. that's awesome. Thank you. Well, uh, again, uh, we are the fourth Thursday of every month. Get it on your calendar. Fourth Tuesday of every month. <laughs> Sorry. Get it on your calendar. Uh, we'll uh, send a note out uh, sometime uh, during the next four weeks about what we're doing next month. Um, and uh, um, uh, so just uh, save, the, save the time for us. Um, tomorrow is uh, the Claris Engage uh, opening session and a session by William DeCourt on FileMaker Server on Linux. So uh, feel free to uh, uh, go online and register for that. Um, those should be good. Uh, they're going to be talking about the future of FileMaker. Uh, some some people may be more interested than others about that, but um, uh, I'd like to see new, the, sorry, the new technologies. The I'm sorry? Which date is that? The future of FileMaker when it's tomorrow. Okay. That's that's at the uh, that's at the kickoff for the Claris Engage that's All happening right. tomorrow right. morning. Uh, one of one of the people who will be talking is going to be showing some new under the hood plans stuff. So, not under the hood, but I mean you know, some new some new features that uh, uh, evidently are uh, have been kept under wraps so far. So. Hmm, I'd be interested to hear that. So uh, anyway, so thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next month. Appreciate everybody being here. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Claire. Charles. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks, Charles.